Hey everybody, here we are in the Kentucky Steam Heritage Corporation Steam Shop in Irvine, Kentucky with our newly acquired from the uh, Pueblo Railway Museum uh, cross compound air compressors. Well, for those that don't know, what is a com cross compound air compressors? Well, it's, it's these. These are cross compound air compressors. The reason they're called that is because, you know, in, in the steam world, a compound engine is an engine that uses steam once and then exhausts it and uses it again. Well, that's what this does. Steam comes in, gets used in this cylinder, gets exhausted into this cylinder, and is used a second time. Meanwhile, on the air side, the air is compressed from the large cylinder into the small cylinder. So it's almost like pre-compression and final compression. So anyway, what we are going to talk about is how to properly lay up an air compressor, lay up, put into storage, the end of season, in between runs during the year. Years ago, I attended a, a, a seminar with Bernie Watts of Backshop Enterprises. Um, much like me, he rebuilds appliances, compressors, dynamos, all that jazz. And his seminar consisted of nothing other than talking about how to properly store an air compressor and feed water pump and stuff like that because he doesn't want to see them every seven years and have to rebuild them, right? They should last a really, really long time. So how do you do that? Well, these were rebuilt by Bernie and set up for temporary storage. Well, it's been 20 years. It's held up, but it's time to redo it. So you take a heavy oil. You can use steam cylinder oil, or in this case, this is uh, Interlube Corporation out of Cincinnati, Ohio, 2400 uh, Journal Guard. It's really thick stuff. Look at if you can see the string of oil. It's, it's super, super thick. So, you know, you have to properly baste your, your appliances or they just won't last. So add a couple basters full of oil to the inlet it's thick it takes a minute to come out okay and then I almost forgot actually I need to uh, open up the lube line going into the reversing valve Westinghouse recommends lubricating these not many operations do but if you have a locomotive you might think about making a new cap for it or getting one from Bernie to allow for direct lubrication it dramatically prolongs the life of the air compressor so add that until it's full which it is put the plug back in When you finish running locomotive for a season, or if you only run it once every several, you know, months or something like that, it's really critical that you go through and blow all the water out and then run oil through them. All right, so we're done with that one. Now we're going to throw some automatic transmission fluid into the air end. It is the best oil out there. It holds up to the temperature. It works with uh, brake valve gaskets. Doesn't develop carbon. It's a detergent. In fact, it'll actually clean. If you do have any carbon in your check valves. Got to use full synthetic though. It's a much larger cylinder on the other side, so it gets two squirts. This one only needs one. Do, 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 do. Well, I swear I can throw a plug in. Eventually, someday it'll go in. Oh, for crying out loud. See, nobody's perfect. Well, 
isn't that something? That's right, can rebuild a locomotive, can't thread a plug into a hole. Oh my gosh. Why will it not go in? There we go. Do to do do to do. It doesn't help that my hands are covered in oil. And these holes aren't tapped straight to the surface of the material, which is a vintage thing, not a burning thing. Okay. Always use your safety pins when dealing with Chicago hoses. All right, Andrew, ready for air. All right, so and you don't have to run them much. Just let them get, you know, maybe 10, 12 strokes in and call it good. Why is there no air? <laughs> there we go, now we got air. Thank you. 